and welcome back. It's a historic day in downtown St. Louis. The new Arts Museum and grounds will open to the public today. Our Abby Larico is back with a sneak peek inside. That's coming up at 6.30. Now the new Arts Museum will mean opportunities to rediscover stories we think we already know, like the key figures, Lewis and Clark's journey. Mm -hmm. That includes the heroine of that journey. Our Abby Larico hit the Missouri Historic Society and the water to do some exploring of her own. If there was a Wonder Woman of westward expansion, well, she might be it. In her efforts to get Lewis and Clark across the country, she faced countless challenges, and now that face is on a gold coin. But the mystery surrounding her starts with her first name. Ah, uh, I say Sacagawea. It used to be Sacagawea, that's how it was when I was a kid. But historians think the new pronunciation is more like what Lewis and Clark actually called her. The significance of the documents that we have in our collections is that some of them are used as examples of what the real story was. This is the Elkskin Journal, the only one left from that expedition. When one of their boats capsized, she saved some of the journals and documents. She was a purchased Shoshone bride of an interpreter and didn't have much of a choice in coming along with their their infant, affectionately called Pomp. I mean, it would have been hard under the best of circumstances, but to have a little baby, I think it would have been incredibly difficult. She became kind of this big myth in the early 1900s when the women's suffrage movement was really getting going. Yes, myth. The truth is they might have overstated her importance as a navigator and they probably would have made it west without her. However, she was still very important as both a translator and a diplomat. She and her baby, the fact that they were there, it made the party look less threatening. Sakakawea may have been the first woman to vote in the newly expanded U.S. on the new camp location. But besides that, we don't really know what she thought about anything. They don't really describe her temperament or her attitude. Sakakawea should have been much more rewarded for her work in the expedition than she was. After Sakakawea died, William Clark would actually go on to raise her son Pomp right here in Missouri. But the myth surrounding her would live on. Was she a Wonder Woman? Or was she just a regular woman raising a child, doing her job, and making the best out of literally uncharted territory? Is there a difference? Abby Larico, five on your side.